taste like the same things. Take ice cream. We like different flavors. Beautiful sunny day. Cheswan and his friends decided to play volleyball in a field next to their college. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't care. Why? You should wear shoes. Yes. Why? Is it wrong? Yeah. Yeah, you will get infection later. But I'm healthy man, you know. Let's play. No, it's okay. Let's play. Yeah. We are not sure. This is a new. We need about parasite, right? But I'm a healthy guy. Okay then. Okay, never mind. Alright, okay, let's play. Let's you. Okay. Let's see, let's see. Hi, sir. Hey, hello. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs>
then the repetition larvae which is in this excreted stool will undergo the indirect development into the free living adult worms which consists of the male and the female adult worms and this female and male adult worms will undergo sexual reproduction and producing eggs so this is the eggs which is produced by the fertilized female worms the eggs will undergo the hatching process by producing the rabbitiform larvae and these rabbitiform larvae which are produced from the embryonated which are produced from the embryonated eggs will develop into the L3 stage or filariform stage of the strongulite stercoralis we must know that the filariform larvae or L3 larvae is actually an infective stage what is infective stage? The infective stage is actually a stage which first initiating the infection in humans. And so now we have already the infective stage which is the filariform larvae and we have the host and we have the soil. So how is it this, uh, this infective stage of the filariform larvae are going to cause uh, infection in humans? So the infection is characterized by the penetration of the filariform larvae into the human host skin through the direct contact with the contaminated soil. The penetration can occur when someone with bare foot come in contact with the contaminated soil when doing the activities related to the soil, such as playing football without wearing any shoes and others. Through the penetration of the filariform larvae into the human host skin, the life cycle is now proceed to the next stage of the life cycle which is the parasitic life cycle. If the free living cycle previously occurred outside of the host body, this parasitic cycle actually occurs the other way around which is inside the host body. We must know that every filariform larvae of strongulus tecoralis in contaminated soil that have penetrated the human skin will actually migrate to the small intestine. So, there are actually two routes, two routes of migration where this filariform larvae will undergo in order to make to make it to in order for them to arriving the small intestine. The first migration route is actually through the bloodstream, through the bloodstream and the second route is through the connective tissue. So first of all we are going to to um to draw on a human host body we have the lungs we have the stomach we have the um, small intestine and others so first of all uh, if the larval larvae that have penetrated the human host body and uh, migrate into the bloodstream they will go to the lungs they will go to the lungs and be coughed up and swallowed and then they are arriving the small intestine for the other root, which is the connective tissue, the filariform larvae will penetrate the connective tissue of the human host body and then they will arrive in the small intestine. And as the filariform larvae or L3 stage of the strangular stercoral is arriving in the small intestine, they will move twice and become the adult female worms only. And these female worms will inhabit the epithelium of the small intestine and producing eggs. So, these female adult worms can still produce eggs without absent, without the presence of the um, male adult worms because they undergo the process we call as parthenogenesis. So, what is the parthenogenesis process? The parthenogenesis process is actually a process of producing eggs without fertilization. The eggs will be deposited in intestinal mucosa and being hatched into the rabbitiform larvae and migrate to the lumen of the large intestine. And the rabbitiform in the large intestine can be either passed into the stool or proceed with the other process, which is can cause auto infection. So, what is auto infection? In auto infection, the rabbitiform larvae will develop into the filariform larvae, which have the ability to penetrate either the intestinal mucosa and or the skin of perianal area and these larval larvae will then migrate randomly to other organs and causing the disseminated disease of strongulite stercolaris. 
The auto-infection of Stragiloides tocaralis explains the persistent infection for many years and causing a hyperinfection in immunosuppressed individuals. However, the auto-infection can only occur if the rabbitophone larvae is not excreted into the stool. However, if this rabbitophone larvae is excreted into the stool, then they will proceed to the free living cycle and one of the roots under the free living cycle is through the direct route, which is when the rabbitophone larvae in the excreted stool is being directly developed into the philodophone larvae or the infective stage of strangular stephanolis and penetrate the human host skin and causing the infection. So basically, these are all the uh, important um, important steps in, in the life cycle of strangular stochralis and I hope you all can understand more uh, more on the life cycle of strangular stochralis. Thank you.